Hello and welcome to Reactus. Our mission and passion at Reactus is to share our thinking with you and to link research and practice. We focus on a topical leadership or management issue in a short, lively, unscripted dialogue. So thank you very much for joining this absolutely fantastic session. And joining me live in the studios is Lester and Imran. How are you gentlemen doing today? Very well, thank you, Faisal. Uh, good to see you. Thank you very much, Faisal. Very tired and looking for this last battle with you here before we go ahead for the weekend. Oh, lovely. Let's make it, let's make it memorable. So let's directly jump onto it. And um, it, today's topic is very interesting. And I, as I was trying to rehearse what to say in the opening session here, so it reminded me of an advice my father gave me when I was a teenager perhaps a couple of years ago. And that was, a great man is known by the way he does little things. So this kind of sank in with me that, you know, it, great things are an accumulation of the small things that we do. And, and it has a, an effect that, we, that, that I've read is called a butterfly effect. So I leave it to you, Lester, to explain what a butterfly effect is and how it influences an individual's life. Yeah, okay, Pfizer. Well, I think, I think straight away when you talked about this, my mind went to what we call micro behaviors in organizations where something comparatively small and apparently insignificant over time can have quite a, a disproportionate impact, okay? So I think micro behaviors are the very tiny uh, unconscious non-verbal or verbal things that we say or do that can make people feel in a certain way they can feel included or excluded they can feel valued or not appreciated or inspired or demotivated um, um, that's what it made me think of and could you just uh, elaborate a bit with some examples that you could share with us yeah, certainly. I mean, you know, I'm sure we all face this where we're in a meeting and, and people have their mobile phone or a device on the desk and as soon as something happens, their attention goes to the mobile phone and it goes away from the focus of the meeting, away from the person who's speaking. It could be that people, you know, we have a global team, a multicultural team, and people's names aren't pronounced in the right way. Well, some are and some aren't, depending on which country you're from and which languages you speak. Um, it could be the basic thing of eye contact, making sure that everybody is looked at in a, such a way that they feel part of what's going on. It could be people are listened to, they're listened to generously with a view to try and understand rather than refute. So they're, they're allowed to speak. We listen graciously. Um, and I think thanking people, you know, these everyday lubricants of which helps human behavior. and. I think those are the key things and I think also sometimes people humor, they humorize, they joke with the same people all the time and they don't share the humor around. It, it might seem trivial but I would submit to you that over time if these things are continually repeated they do have an impact on the team and I've certainly experienced that myself uh, in, in a recent uh, with a client uh, which has been going on for several months. So it won't be wrong to say that if you summarize it, that the devil lies in the detail. I think that's a great way to summarize it. The devil lies in the detail. And as I say, it has a compound effect over time. There's no guarantee here. It's not kind of cause and effect, but I think it is something that as organizational leaders and managers, we have to be mindful of. So now I take a, it, it a bit sp step further to Imran that how does it influence or impacts the organizations, this butterfly effect? Thank you, Faisal. This is a beautiful concept uh, that you're sharing. And I, I agree with Lester that these are small micro behaviors, but ultimately the point is that you cannot influence those micro behaviors, or let's say you cannot control them all the time. And eventually they would come in and they would hit the organization. It's re very rare to escape that kind of effect. And scientists describe that as chaos. When it happens inside the organization, there's chaos. And that is where the chaos theory took, um, was, was introduced to the world uh, by the same author who has presented this idea of butterfly effect. And it, it is actually about the point where stability in the system moves into instability. 
or where the order in the system moves to disorder. Hope so that makes again, sense. You know, some, yeah, again, some very nice verbosity, you know, as, as, as you always do with, with words. But so I'm, I'm, I'm a corporate executive. So what does it mean, mean to me? And how do I deal with that chaos or, or the butterfly effect? That's uh, again as a as a strategist looking and working with many clients and looking into this situation, Vessel. Perhaps I would say we are currently going through a period of chaos in the aftermath of COVID. I I would argue that chaos is good. You don't really need to manage it as an organizational executive. You need to uh, promote it. I would say. Because innovative organizations who grow further, they amplify the differences. They do not, they do not minimize them. And at the po this point in time, I remember Iqbal. Uh, he, he said beautiful words and I can't resist sharing it. When Iqbal says, Khuda tujhe kisi tufaan se aashna karte, ke tere behar ki mojo mein is tarab nahi. I wish God exposes you to some choppy waters. Because the water, the sea in which you are treading along doesn't have the current. So as, as organizations and executives working inside the organizations, I would rather propose not to follow linear patterns, rather to follow some disorganized patterns, because that is where the real opportunity for growth is. Moving away from linearity and moving more into 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 new aspects, exposing new things and learning from it. Faisal, can I propose one thing? Yeah. If, if I can propose one very pragmatic, I'm assuming you said you're a corporate exec, I'm assuming that you run meetings or a part of meetings as a senior person. And do you ever look at the process of the meeting as well as the task and the agenda? You often ask the question, how well are we working together? Yeah, but, but, but you know, I seriously doubt about the seniority part that you mentioned, but yes, I do run meetings. Okay. Okay. So one thing I could offer you is you could you could look at the micro behaviors. You could make a little list. You could do an audit and say, look, at the end of each meeting, how are we doing on this? Are we falling into this trap or not? Because I can tell you, lack of attention to process of a meeting can easily disable the group and affect the quality of the output. So that's my concrete proposal to you. Very well taken indeed. Thank you very much indeed for this thoughtful discussion on this absolutely fantastic topic. And I'd like to close this with, uh, with, with the thought that the flaps of a butterfly in one part of the world could cause tornado in the other part of the world. Thank you so much for joining us. Stay tuned to the other episodes of Reactors. Until next time, take care.